Hey folks, this is Matt once again, coming at you with another review. Sort of a mix of a rant and a review, because this is, of course, Leprechaun 4 in Space, 1997 film. That after three films, they decided to take the Leprechaun in Space. Directed by Brian Trenchard Smith, who directed Part 3, and he's directed stuff like Turkey Shoot, Night of the Demons 2, uh, a number of other films, Dead End Drive-In. And for what I understand, Leprechaun 4, it was uh, like this cover is meant to be a spoof on Apollo 13. And Leprechaun 4 is more of a straight up comedy than the other films, at least to me. And this is shitty, but I would say Leprechaun 4, I found it entertainingly shitty. So it's still a bad film, really bad film. But I, I will admit, part of me found it entertainingly shitty. Kind of like a Troll 2, Silent Night, Daily Night 2 type of way. It was entertainingly shitty, at least for my part. And of course, I, I guess a lot of people were pissed because, oh, they took them to space. I'm like, yeah, like the first three were good. At least they weren't to me. I know there's a lot of people like the first one, like the series, that's fine. But I think Leprechaun 2 and 3 and 1, they all suck ass. So the suckage continues, but I'm fine with them just going, fuck it, let's just go ridiculous over the top, let's just go for bro, for the kitchen sink. So it's a shitty film that's dirty D, done dirt cheap, special effects at so goddamn cheap, until a few points, which actually has some decent practical effects, like this scientist that turns into this scorpion spider type creature, because Leprechaun put a spider and a scorpion into this mix, blended it up, inject it, and it's a practical effect, this creature, because it spins webs like a spider, but also kind of like a scorpion. Pretty good practical effect. So, maybe that's where all the budget went to. But, Leprechaun 4 in space, it's shitty film, but, oh, they went into space. I'm like, the rest of the films fucking suck. <laughs> But I guess this would be my favorite of the group. Because it's laughably bad. Like, this is one I can laugh at. The other ones, Leprechaun 1, 2, and 3, I thought were just boring, unfunny, even in a bad way. It was just tedious to watch. But Lepre Leprechaun 4 in space, to me, was entertainingly shitty. Um, like, and it's sad, I mean, either to laugh at the special effects are so cheap, like the beginning you see these ships, and it's sad when fucking TV shows and shit I see on YouTube has better effects of shit outside and outer space and spaceships. Hell, my friend Michael Keane is doing a fuck, he's doing a, uh, Star Trek fan film, Michael Keane. And he showed effects, those look better than the stuff in this fucking movie. Uh, Starship Valiant, I believe, is a Star Trek fan film. And those effects look better. Did he show a little clip? Like, a little what it could be. And even that part was better than the effects in this movie. But it just kind of made me laugh. It's like, wow, Ed Wood would be proud. Um, then you have your group of Marines. I can't remember the Marines' names. Uh, but, like, you have this uh, sort of sergeant-type guy who has this really cheap-looking looking metal plate in his head. Uh, you have uh, the lead guy, and then you have this lead girl. I believe her name. I believe the guy's Brent Jasmer, and the girl's Deb Dunning. Um, pretty much, there are a bunch of Marines who are chasing this alien, who we find out is this female princess. The leader, again, the their sergeant is this guy with the metal head. Of course, later on you find out he's a cyborg. They didn't know it. They just thought, oh, he got hurt and they put a metal plane in his head. But the I will say the sergeant guy, I got, a lot, I got some laughs out of him with pretty much how over the top he was. Like he says, a, bullshit. <laughs> like just the, his dialogue, um, just very gun hole over the top. Uh... He made me chuckle a couple times. I will say, I'll knock your teeth and shit down your throat. I, I, he just, the guy with the metal, he made me chuckle a few times, just being very over the top. Uh, uh, 
Um, but the Marines are going to chase out. And then you have this uh, woman who she's uh, like a biologist, not really Marine, but she's there to look at the life forms, like study. Uh, you have this bald scientist that sort of is the guy who uh, told them to do this or telling them what to do. It's this bald guy who you find out, like you just see him in screens and later on he comes out with this very cheap looking $10 um, device that apparently like at the top of his is skin, but the bottom is like this robotic type thing that rolls like a scooter. And he talks like, I don't know if they're going for Dr. Strangelove, but he talks like the guy from Holding's Heroes, like, What is it? What are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. What is it? Or how the fuck you talk? It's just really bad, really shitty. Um, you say there's a really shitty comedy, but... Sometimes, for me, it was so shitty, it made me laugh. So I got entertainment out of it, unlike the other films. So that's how I'm like... It's like it's, it's a shitty film, so it's a rant, but at the same time, I was entertained by how laughably bad it was. And sometimes uh, I wonder, like... I think It seems like maybe they know they're doing a bad film. Um, I mean, hell, the characters are like Stitch and Butch and Mooch. Um, and Leprechaun, Leprechaun... Which, I almost wish he wasn't in the movie. <laughs> Not even almost, I wish he wasn't. If he had just like a xenomorph or a cheap looking alien that was a rip off of a xenomorph, then it'd be a party. But unfortunately he's there, he's in this fucking tuxedo, he's kidnapped this alien princess that really all that's different, she has some like glitter shit all over her. Um, he wants to be king, promise her riches, says hey you marry me, we'll kill your king, I'll be king of the universe, and... How the fuck this links up to the other films, your guess is as good as mine. Don't fucking matter. The Marines get there and it's shit like the Leprechaun kills one. He has a mini lightsaber. I'm like, wow, George Lucas ain't soon ain't gonna sue somebody. Someone told me that George Lucas was an uncredited executive producer of Leprechaun, the first one. Guy, were you pulling my leg or is there some type of truth to that? I don't know if you're pulling my leg or what. Um but yeah, I mean, a mini lightsaber, I'm like, like li literally a little lightsaber this big, that's like green, and get the idea that they chopped his leg, the leprechaun chops his leg off, but you don't really see it. But they blow up the leprechaun with a grenade, decent practical effect, and this marine, this one time, he decides to piss on the leprechaun's remains, and this energy, really cheap $2 effect, this green energy goes to his crotch. Uh, and, uh... Oh, yeah, you do have Miguel A. Nunez Jr. Miguel he, A. Nunez was in, uh... What was he in? He was in Return of the Living Dead. He was in Friday 13 Part 5. Juana Man. He's been quite a few stuff. Kicking it old school. But he's the black guy. He doesn't die at the end. Was spoiled it, but I like Miguel A. Nunez. I like him, even when he's not giving, you know, it's not like the best of dialogue and stuff. But I still like him. So it's like, oh wow, they didn't kill him off. They <laughs> they kill him off in Carnosaur Two. They kill him off in Friday the Part Five. Everyone pretty much dies in Return of the Living Dead. Um, <laughs> so a lot of horror films he's in, he dies, but he didn't die in this one, which I surprised the shit out of me in a good way. Uh, but I didn't like the they get back. They get the, the princess who's knocked out, and again, the, the sergeant or whoever hell he was with the metal thing, he, uh, some of his dialogue was, made me chuckle, like, this dude just stuff secure so I can get drunk. And, like, this girl who, I think she's the girl who played Heidi in on a Home Improvement. Like, uh, you know, Tim and Al, they had their tool time show. And not Pamela Anderson, but, like, the other girl that the, they had later. Um, I forget the actress's name. I believe it's her, Heidi, so they Tim and Al's assistant on tool time. I think she's there. I think, I mean, I think this is her. And Taste this guy, and they're going to have, it was kind of weird. They're, they're going to have sex near this waste disposal place. I'm like, really? That's the place you're going to have sex? And then this is obviously a, a goof on Alien, this part, because 
Something comes out of the guy, but instead of his chest, it's his pants. And so, yeah, the leprechaun comes out of the guy's pants. Thankfully, we don't see his dick. We don't see any gore. We just see it's poking out, and then the leprechaun comes out. Which I think was fine, because I didn't even see the guy's dick or anything. Chases the girl, Heidi, the girl who's Heidi on Homebrew. Again, I think it's her. I could be wrong. Who, I like this, he needs... Leprechaun the balls and punches them out, which I cool. And like the the ball guy, the guy who sort of tells everyone what to do, the, the scientist guy, he has this assistant who for some reason, like well not for some reason, but he starts touching the knocked out princess, like looking at her. And of course, guys, you are naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> they follow Leprechaun as a disposal plan, which happens to have this flesh eating bacteria, of course. Leprechaun cuts the suit of one guy. And it made me laugh because the our lead guy gets the other guy out. And he goes, I forget what the character's name, but like if it was Smith, it's like, it's Smith. It cuts, and then it cuts away, and the guy's just a pile of bones. There's a little bit of some blood on him. It's like, it's Smith, he's not okay or something like that. And it cuts away. It, it cuts to her with this just pile of bones. I'm like, he's more than just not okay. But then they go to the scientist guy. And the, again, the sergeant threatens this assistant. says, I'm not dumping your teeth and shit down your throat. And then the guy, the assistant goes, sorry, I'm not really hungry right now. But I don't know why it is. I don't know how many brain cells are... Dis decreasing but I got entertained out of this even though it's a really really shitty film it's, uh, that's where you find out that the scientist got a ball guy's part machine and they're ready to mutiny and go off it's like you know if you do it's going to be mutiny and also I'll give you a bonus and the sergeant's like well if, if any of my men die any more men die then your ass is grass if you even got an ass well, I don't know, just the way the guy did it. And, like, he, that sergeant guy has a conversation with, uh, the, again, who I think is Heidi from Home Improvement. And she's, like, sorry, is like, I feel guilty. I mean, I'm the one who gave him the boner. And, uh, the sergeant says, nah. He would have wanted it that way. He was Marine. <laughs> It's like, she's like, yeah, it was my fault, uh, cause I gave him the boner. It's like, nah, he would have wanted it that way. I, I don't know why. This is the way it was just dead straight. Just made me chuckle. Um, the lead guy and the lead girl they escape from this fire from Leprechaun. They go on this catwalk. Um, this is this guy who's a chicken shit who's with Miguel and Nunez and leaves Miguel's ass. Um, gets in the room, wants to make a deal with the Leprechaun. The leprechaun drops this big crate on him. Kind of like the Looney Tunes, like da 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 da, da. just do drops a crate on him. Um, no blood or anything, so it's really, you know, not much for in the gore department, really. Uh, what the hell happened? For some reason, they have a doorbell on the ship because the scientist guy has a doorbell, and the leprechaun like fucks up the assistant and tosses to the the ball guy. Like, I don't know why they have a doorbell on the ship. And um, that assistant tries to stab the leprechaun. But the leprechaun literally throws something, a uh, pizza tray, and smashes the guy's face. And when he pulls it off, decent practical effect. But it's like uh, very cartoonish. You know how it cartoons when a character gets splatted and then they look like a, a pizza face? That's what this guy Looks like that's his death. He's a pizza. Like I said, they really try for just some straight out comedy, which, to be honest, I'm more fine with them trying to be serious because when they try to be serious in these films, it falls flat on his face. Because I said, War Davis to me is not scary at all. He's not threatening at all. And when it tries to be serious and scary, if to me it fucking fails harder. And I rather them just go for broke on comedy, even though it's not great comedy at all. But there's some in, like, either the cheap, like, when they're on the planet earlier, let's, if you think Jason X looks cheap, you should watch Leprechaun 4 in space. That looks cheap. 
things. I've seen people on YouTube make better special effects and better fucking green screen when they were on that planet. But again, like the, the Leprechaun mentions the Scorpion, Spider Goop, and Jets into the Ball Guy. Um, the remaining Marines. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. I know there's a moment where the Heidi girl it blows up the Leprechaun in a good practical effect, but then it comes back and then tips her over and then steps on her fingers and she falls to her death and really bad green screen. <laughs> You know, falls down to her death. They find the princess, but the princess is working. The alien princess is working, and the, you had to get titties in there, which I, to be honest, I appreciate. Cause she goes, "This is your fate. You know, you're gonna be in such pain." And then what she does is the alien princess shows them her tits. And I like Miguel and Nunez. It's like, will hurt me first. <laughs> Leprechaun takes the Sarge hostage, is able to control him, and again, this, this is like something that didn't work, but it's just, oh my god, what the fuck, they're really trying to pull everything they can out of the book, make the sergeant dress in drag, and this won't be the last Leprechaun that you see people in drag, wait till the next one in the hood, fuck that movie, but, and then, dress in drag and fight them, and the, the lead girl does some karate, and it's horrendous karate. Um, they ultimately fry, have to fry the Sarge, and they find out he's a cyborg. Uh, Miguel A. Nunez gets attacked by the spider guy, but he's you know still alive. He's trying to get rid of the auto-destruct sequence, while the gr lead girl and lead guy have this firefight. And he gets hit in the arm, the lead guy. He gets hit in the arm, but for some reason he has to take his whole shirt off. <laughs> You know how a lot of movies, it's, okay, it's always the girl. Well, ultimately, this girl kind of loses her clothes, too. But the guy does, too. He's just, instead of, like, ripping a piece and putting it on, he's got to take his entire shirt off. So he's <laughs> running around with, with his shirt off. And um, the girl uses the device. And, unfortunately, by on accident, so it makes the leprechaun bigger. I don't know why, but this line made me laugh, just the way the guy says, like, what? What did he shoot him with? Steroids? I don't know why, for the reason the way the guy said that made me laugh. What do you. What the hell did he say? He's like, What did you shoot him with? Steroids? This is the way he said it made me laugh. I, at least I got some entertainment, even though it's extremely shitty. That's more I can say for the first three. I don't think this is the worst one, at least. It's as, it's as entertainingly shitty to me. I got to see some tits. They made him big, and they have a good, decent spider scorpion creature, and and uh, crappy ass scenarios. It's just like really, and the the girls dealing with the spider creature in the vent. The guys dealing with the leprechaun in the cargo bay. The girl freezes the spider creature with liquid nitrogen, um, and he of course he does a heal me from the original the fly and she gets blown up good practical effect when it gets blown up um they set the leprechaun out of airlock uh when the again and talk about entertainingly she when the leprechaun goes out of the airlock really really horrible effects they use an explosion from a, a different scene <laughs> Because the Leprechaun is supposed to be exploding in space. But when it explodes, it's a scene that's inside. That's a set. So they use an explosion from a scene, from a, a, another scene, another thing. Because Leprechaun is flowing in space, they're cut to an explosion in a room. Because you can see, like, right over here, there's, like, pipes and shit. And, like, it's green. It's, like, green light. And you see like pipes and shit over here, and you see stuff over here. So it cuts when he blows up. It's a blow up of something interior. When he's blowing up his family, <laughs> are you serious? Jesus Christ! This is Ed Wood material right here. God damn! And they're able to stop the self destruct, which goes. Have a nice day. 
Which I don't, for some reason made me think of Flash Gordon when they do that. You save the Earth. Have a nice day. Yeah! You know, <laughs> cue the Flash Gordon music. Uh, uh, the lead girl and lead guy kiss, and Miguel's like, oh, I guess uh, I don't get none. <laughs> and outside, the leprechaun who's blown up, the finger, middle fingers them, and they go, yeah, same to you, pal. And the movie ends, and I'm like, <laughs> and this film. Everything I've described to you showcases how shitty this film is with a handful of decent practical effects, but a lot of times really cheap Ed Wood style special effects. Uh, the acting, the scenarios, and stuff they come up with. But for some reason, I wasn't bored. I was entertained by how shitty it was. It's, I think because they just said, fuck it, it's in space, it's a comedy, over-the-top Sarge, Medellin Inez Jr., who I like, uh, show a pair of titties, uh, very, in I'm sure a lot of people just hate it and are bored with it, I don't blame you, I think the entire series sucks ass, but I will say, I, I, it's shitty, it is horrible, but I got some entertainment to laugh at, at least, uh, Unlike the first three, at least not for me. I know some people say, well, I thought you did some humor out of it. This one I did. <laughs> this one I did. It's still horrendous, but I still got some fun out of it. But yeah, the others, like the Hood films, which, god damn, I gotta get into. Which, by the way, I don't own them on DVD. I don't watch the Hood films online. Well, I've seen the Hood films. I watch them online. That's why you don't see them in reviews for those in a little bit. But yeah, I love Crown 4 at least... I guess some entertainment out of it, by how bad it was. So, it's more I can say for some movies. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you later.